Hello everyone and welcome you to this session of Times Ascent Hangout. Uh, we are grateful to you for taking our time and joining us for this very important and pertinent topic, the path of joy for working professionals. This is the second session that we are doing on this topic. The earlier session that we had done was on 30th September and a recording of that is available in the Times uh, ascent hangout uh, you know webinar uh, archives in that session we had talked about uh, the stress you know what is the neuroscience behind stress uh, you know how we can pause how can how developing the ability to pause can help us uh, deal with stress and about aversion and attachment today's session is going to take that discussion forward and you know we're going to talk about uh, what are the uh, how we put conditions to our uh, happiness and you know how that reduces energy and what are the things we can do to increase the energy and our happiness we are currently going through very tough times one of the challenges that people uh, often report uh, is that uh, feeling overwhelmed having to do too much in too less a time. The other challenge which people are facing these days is relating to the relationships, whether these are relationships at home or at work. Uh, you know, this is causing a major source of stress. There is rising distrust uh, uh, amongst people, you know, whether it is employers or employees, whether it is the consumer and the service provider, the trust deficit has been on a rise and all of this together is taking a toll on our health. Before we move on, I would like to take a minute to introduce myself. My name is Ashish Kumar and I am the founder of Mindful Living. Uh, this is a company I started in 2018 with a mission to help 1 million uh, working profiles lead healthier, happier and wealthier lives. In the last two years, we have conducted uh, 175 sessions for leading organizations like IBM, Tata Group, Airbnb, uh, SDFC Life, Kotak Life, uh, etc. Many reputed organizations. I am pleased to be co-hosting this session along with Amrita Gupta Nair, who is joining in from Dubai. She is the founder of Happiness HQ. She is a life coach and a mindfulness meditation teacher. Prior to Dubai, she lived in USA for a couple of years, and before that in India. Welcome to the session, Amrita. Thank you, Ashish. Yeah. This is a session about uh, you know, the path of joy for working professionals. And you may be wondering, why do I have the picture of this uh, boy, this child here in the presentation? And the reason for that is to see the joy this child is uh, witnessing, you know, is experiencing. He has absolutely no possessions, you know. Uh, he is just playing with the dried leaves, but he is so full of joy. I think as children, we are the happiest, we are the most joyful, and that is a time when we don't own anything, uh, but, you know, we are still the happiest. But as we grow older, uh, you know, our idea of happiness or joy gets linked to uh, possessions. Uh, you know, so if I don't have a house, I want to have a house. And if I have a house, I would like to have a bigger house. And I link my happiness uh, to that. So, uh, you know, I commonly hear people say, I'll be happy when I have a house. I'll be happy when I have a bigger house. Or car, you know, a bigger car. Be the, uh, you know, if I, have a, if I don't have a car, I want a car. If I have a car, I want a bigger car. Uh, those who are not managers want to become managers, so we link our happiness to the position. So I'll be happy when I get a promotion and become a vice president. If I'm a vice president, I say if you know I'll be happy uh, when I uh, become a director. And like this, you know, we are in a constant state of running. Uh, those who are single are looking for loving relationships, and those who are in loving relationships are looking to decouple you know so uh, the happiness just seems to be so elusive uh, it seems to be lying somewhere 
outside our grasp, you know, just outside our grasp. And the one of the common coping strategies which people have is to indulge in pleasure. You know, so we uh, either land up eating more or we land up drinking more. But the uh, you know this doesn't make us happier, and we are in a constant treadmill where we are running for more money, more position, uh, more uh, pleasure, uh, more uh, you know every more of anything, and it takes a toll on us, and we start burning out you know and uh, you know we don't realize this uh, but uh, you know inside our body is responding to the stress that we are creating uh, to con by constantly uh, you know chasing these things and uh, how many of you would like to switch uh, from this mad rush uh, and become happier uh, if you would like to switch uh, and become happier, please type happier or H in the chat box. And then we will discuss few strategies of how we can become happier. And true happiness, friends, lies not in position, not in possession, or in people, or in pleasure. True happiness lies in finding peace inside ourselves. This is a photo of Gautam Buddha. And as you might be aware that he was the king, the prince of a very prosperous kingdom. He had all the luxuries and all the money with him, but he still left his palace in search of happiness. It is not the money that makes us happy. It is not the constant pursuit of material goals that make us happy, but it is pausing uh, and you know connecting with ourselves that makes us happier. I'm by no means suggesting that we should give up what we have got. What we are trying to talk about is becoming aware of our emotions and accepting things, people, situations as they are. And this my friends, is the first step, you know, this awareness of how we are feeling, this non-judgmental awareness of how we are feeling, uh, you know, about our thoughts, about the people in our lives, is the first step towards progress. And the second step towards progress is acceptance. And when we talk about acceptance, you know, whenever I talk about accepting things, people, situation, events, uh, as they are, one of the pushbacks I get uh, from people is that, uh, you know, it looks like a very uh, low energy thing. You know, people feel that if I accept things as they are, if I accept uh, people as they are, uh, you know, then I am becoming passive. But uh, contrary to popular perception, uh, in his book, Power Versus Force, Dr. David Hawkins says that acceptance actually is a very high energy situation to be in. Uh, Dr. David Hawkins did a phenomenal job in calibrating uh, the, uh, you know, the vibrations and frequency associated with each emotion that we have. And you know, there are low energy emotions, which are shame, guilt, apathy, uh, fear, grief, desire, uh, you know, and there are high energy emotions. So 200, uh, level of 200, which is where courage starts calibrating, and above that is where the progress happens. So we are going to talk today about how can we, uh, you know, by starting to accept ourselves as we are, by accepting our emotions as we are, uh, and by being thankful for the experiences that we are having, uh, we move up from a low energy state to a high energy state. I will request you to please take a screenshot uh, of this because we're going to be uh, referring to this again as we move along. The second pushback I get when I talk about accepting is, uh, you know, people ask me, uh, should I accept? Like in one of the uh, webinars I was doing uh, for a corporate, large IT corporate, which is lacks of employees. Uh, one of the employees asked me, I have an older version of Apple phone. I don't remember which model it was. And at that time, a new model had been launched. So he asked me, should I accept that, you know, I should always live with this old model of Apple and not upgrade to that new model? And then that's when I thought, you know, uh, 
how do we what, what is it that we accept and what is it that we change and i found this serenity prayer to be a brilliant guide uh, in our deciding what to accept and what to change and this prayer which is very simple but very powerful uh, goes like uh, god grant me the serenity to accept the things that i cannot change the courage to change the things i can and the wisdom to know the difference this is a very powerful prayer and it gives us an idea on what we should accept and what we should uh, change and uh, you know one of the seniors in the companies i used to work for uh, he used to say that ashish pick up your battles very carefully uh, you know we uh, we need to choose very carefully what we need to fight on you know what do we need to push and this is not something which is new even a couple of hundred years ago uh, uh, saint kabir had talked about contentment about peace uh, by uh, you know and i would like to cite this doha bodhan gajdhan bajidhan aur ratan dhan khan jo aave santosh dhan sab dhan dhuri saman and here what he is saying is you know uh, the 500 years ago uh, the wealth used to be uh, counted in terms of the cows that you have the cow herds you have the elephants that you own the horses that you own or the jewels jewelry jewels you have and he says you one might have all of this but if one is not contented if one is not satisfied with what we have then everything else is useless because we are constantly hankering for more uh, there is a sense of lack uh, in our life and uh, when there is a sense of lack you know that i lack this i uh, you know then we are operating out of a, a low energy state uh, we are not suggesting that you don't go for more but what we are suggesting is a small uh, difference where uh, you can uh, say i have enough and i want more so there is no dissatisfaction when you say i have enough and you keep striving for more that way uh, you move out of the low energy state which comes from uh, you know having that lack and you know you you can then uh, measure uh, make significant progress and don't believe this because uh, you know i am saying this uh, please uh, try this out you know uh, please start accepting yourself the people in your life getting in touch with your emotions tracking them and see how transformative it is you know once you start being contented you start thinking that i am enough and i have enough you know see the transformation uh, that happens in your life and to uh, illustrate uh, with this point of acceptance i would like to uh, share a small story about a poor but wise farmer who used to live in central europe and uh, in his village uh you know they used to use horses to till the land and this farmer was so poor he did not even have money uh, to have a horse so he somehow borrowed money and bought a horse to till the land uh, but unfortunately the uh, horse runs away one of the days and he escapes to a jungle nearby and the friends of the farmer come to him and uh, tell him oh this is something which is very bad that has happened uh, you know you didn't have money and you with great difficulty managed to borrow the money and uh, you know now uh, the horses run away now you have debt and the horses gone this is something very bad and the farmer says uh, good thing bad thing who knows and it so happens that couple of uh, days later the the horse which had run away makes friends with uh, you know 11 new horses in the jungle and he returns to the village uh, with the uh, uh, you know uh, all his friends so the now the farmer has got 12 horses he didn't have a single one and now he has got 12 uh, so the friends of the uh, farmer uh, come and they talk about they give they say oh this is something so, so good that has happened to you uh, you know and uh, for the farmer once again says you know good thing bad thing who knows and you know these horses were wild horses uh, so the farmer's son was trying to tame them riding them and training them uh, and it so happens that while he was riding them he fell down and he broke his leg and the friends of the farmer come and say oh you know this is such a terrible thing that has happened your young son he has broken a leg now now nobody is going to marry him and the wise farmer once again says good thing bad thing who knows 
and uh, you know it so happens that the kingdom in which they were living in in which this village was located went on a war with a neighboring kingdom and uh, the king uh, sent his army to recruit all able-bodied men uh, and all the able-bodied men from the village were taken away with the exception of uh, this uh, farmer's son because he had a broken leg and the friends of the farmer came sobbing to him he's uh, saying that you know our children have been taken away we don't know whether they will live whether they will survive the war we don't know whether we will live to see their face, face once again and you are so lucky uh, you know your son is there with you and the farmer once again says uh, you know good thing bad thing uh, who knows so friends you are all very smart and intelligent people i'm sure you would have uh, gotten the moral of the story you would have taken uh, your own takeaways from the story the point here is you know we sometimes rush uh, too quickly to judge events as good or bad but if we are equanimous uh, if we accept things as they are uh, and have a positive outlook you know then what is appearing to be good today becomes uh, uh, bad tomorrow and what is appearing to be bad today becomes good tomorrow so that's how the life is good and bad good and bad you know life is not a straight line uh, you know there are things with it's always in a constant change of mode day becomes night night becomes day summer becomes winter winter becomes summer you know we have rains so there is always a constant change we should have the courage to accept things as they are uh, and not be judgmental about them you know uh, the minute we start judging things as they are you know we uh, lose uh, the power and the power goes outside us rather if we are thankful for whatever is there in our lives our energy increases you know uh, that energy scale that i shared with you uh, one of the safest and quickest ways to increase our energy levels is by being thankful when we are thankful for what we have got in our lives you know the people we have in our lives the food that we have got the job that we have got whenever we are focused on what we have got our energy uh, on and we are thankful for it our energy rises it is very very scientific uh, much like how we uh, tune our radio uh, you know if i want to listen to 98.4 uh, you know, I need to tune into 98.4, and if I need to listen to 107.2, uh, I need to tune into 107.2. I can't tune into 98.4 and uh, uh, you know think of uh, uh, and aspire to listen to music which is playing in 107.2. So if I want better things in my life, I need to be first grateful for what I have got uh, in my life, uh, and the more thank you we say. Uh, you know, the more uh, the manifestation takes place in our lives, we move to high energy level. As long as we are trapped in the low energy level, uh, life is a challenge. You know, it always appears uphill. But as we transcend, you know, as we move up to the higher energy levels, uh, you know, life becomes a joy. It becomes a pleasure. And our energy to accomplish more and more uh, is there. You know, if I sounded like, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, advising people to give up or uh, you know not uh, uh, become saint or something you know that's not what i'm saying i'm all i'm saying is uh, be thankful for what you have so that you are able to have more and more in life and that is how the science works and uh, believe me uh, only after you have tried it and on that note i will request you to take a minute we will pause here for a minute and please thank someone in your life uh, whether it is your colleague uh, uh, or it is your senior in the organization or somebody else in another department who helped you. Uh, just think of or your parents or your siblings or friend. Is there anyone in your life right now uh, you are uh, feeling thankful to? Uh, and if they, I'm sure there is. Uh, and so please send them a message. Uh, thank you, name of the person. And just write this short briefly. What are you thankful for? Uh, you know, so uh, on that note, uh, I will uh, pause here and let you complete uh, this, uh, uh, you know, sending these messages. And with that, I will also invite uh, Amrita uh, to come in and uh, take over uh, for the exciting part of the presentation where she's going to be talking about the science of happiness. How cool is that? You know, I didn't know there's a science to happiness. 
that is what she's going to be speaking about. She has got very rich experience uh, uh, in this field, and I'm sure uh, you know you will benefit from the insights that she's going to uh, share. So, Amrita, I have now made you the presenter. You should be able to share your Thank screen. You. Thank you so much, Ashish. Just confirm for me that you're able to view my screen right now. I'm able yes, to see. you are. Okay, that was some great uh, insight, Ashish. Thank you so much. And I'm going to go piggyback riding on what you just shared about some valuable tools to have the ability or the awareness to know that we need to accept, we need to have thankfulness, we need to be aware and conscious. So that brings me to uh, the premise for whatever I'm going to share today. We are going through our lives, whether it is a professional life or personal life, we are experiencing our lives through two worlds, the inner world and the outer world. And what is the connection between the two? It simply means that we are constantly experiencing everything that's with our emotions. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. So Sorry, it all begins okay. with, yeah. Okay. So it all begins with a stimulus. What I mean is that there is a situation or maybe there is a behavior of somebody, something is going on. There is a scene in our lives. When that pops up in front of us, what we do is we create a thought in our minds. And with that thought, I am thinking, creating it with my own words, my own vocabulary, it's all me. I am the one who's creating the thought. Now, whether I created a bad thought or a good thought, accordingly, I'm going to experience some feelings and emotions. It's a good thought, I'm gonna feel good. If I created a bad thought, I'm gonna feel bad. But whichever way I'm feeling or the emotions that have come up in me, that is what is going to lead me to my reciprocation to that situation in, in terms of words or action or behavior. So it's important to note that between a stimulus and a response, there is a space in between. And this is our space. This is where we have the power. This is where we can make our choice. Now, let me give you a simple example. Say at work, I have been asked by my big boss to make a presentation. Now, in order to make that particular presentation on a project, I need some input and some data from different team members. So everybody has given me whatever I needed, except for one guy. I has been, you know, telling me I'll give it to you tomorrow, I'll give it to you the day after. And if then I have to go approach him to follow up about what he hasn't given me, chances are I'm going to sound irritable. Is that going to make him give me whatever I need on time? And he may get a little irritated and say, I'm going to take some more time. However, is, there is another option for me. I could feel that, okay, he is the only person who has not given me the details that I'm looking for. Maybe I could go and egg him on that and, you know, maybe motivate him and kind of pep him up. So I could go to him and say, hey, buddy, I need this from you. Without this, I won't be able to make the presentation. Help me out, okay? I'm just waiting for this. I could speak nicely to him and make him believe that I really need this help from you. And the, the chances are that he's going to be more willing to immediately help me with that. What I'm trying to say is that whether it's our personal lives or professional lives, whatever is going on, whatever we are doing, what is it that we are looking for? We're looking for positive outcome. 
we are looking for a certain desired response from every situation. But when something is happening outside the stimulus, it is in the outer world. We may have little or no control over it. But the good news is that what happens next is very much in my control. Now, this is something so powerful. And I always tell people, make sure that not only we become aware of our thoughts as things are happening, we also need to encourage the next generation, the children growing up, to become aware of this particular formula. See, the, the English language teachers in school, they're doing a great job of teaching our kids how to use good vocabulary for reading and writing. But what we also need to teach them is how to cleverly use good, effective vocabulary in our thoughts so that we can navigate through everything that's going on in life more effectively, more with positive outcome. Right now, that brings me to this beautiful, um, you know, very powerful uh, quote by Maya Angelou. What you're supposed to do when you don't like a thing is change it. If you can't change it, change the way you think about it. Don't complain. So from this whole thing, change and don't complain. They really stuck with me. And I'm going to go dig a little deeper into how we can change the situation by thinking differently. Here are some examples. Sometimes we would say that, hey, it's not my fault. Or I could say, I haven't found a solution yet. Sorry, I'm late. The traffic was really bad. Sorry, I'm late. I did not leave enough time to get here. I have been cheated a couple of times. Obviously, I feel insecure. I have been cheated a couple of times. I need to learn to be more aware and vigilant. Or why does everything bad always happen to me? These situations do not represent me. They are a necessary part of my journey to grow. Now, if I continue to speak the language on the left, the ones that you see in red, they all sound like I'm complaining. They are like complaining, blaming. And if I keep doing that over a period of time without checking the vocabulary or what I'm saying or my thoughts, then it's so likely that I would sound like a victim. And this is how over a period of time, I would develop a victim mindset or a victim consciousness. However, on the other side, the blue statements, this sound like those of responsibility. And the more and more I get into the habit of converting my statements into statements of responsibility, I develop a leader mindset, a leadership consciousness. Isn't that what we need? Because when we are complaining all the time, when we are feeling like a victim, when we are just cribbing all the time, putting the blame on other people, we always say, oh my God, why me? Why is this happening to me? But what does a leader say? He says, try me, because a leader is always ready, all right? Moving on, like Ashi, he said, I wanted to share with all of you a little bit. Of course, this is just uh, the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to understand about the science of how we experience the world and how we feel. To begin with, I think all of us are familiar with these happiness chemicals, as they are called in the brain, the dopamine, endorphin, uh, oxytocin, and serotonin. So what is it? Why are they called the happy uh, hormones? Because they promote positive feelings, including happiness and pleasure. How does that happen? Dopamine is responsible for feeling good. Serotonin is responsible for regulating your mood. Oxytocin is responsible for the love hormone, for the bondings and the relationships. And endorphin is the body's natural painkiller. So obviously, uh, all put together, these hormones are very critical in bringing about a sense of well-being into our lives. So what I'm going to share on the next screen are how certain very simple day-to-day -day activities, day-to-day -day practices, each one of those can actually promote and optimize the secretion of these hormones. So what you can do is, one, I once I've shared it, you can take a screenshot. It's just a little pointer. To begin with, let's look at dopamine. Now, dopamine is the reward chemical. Simple things like completing a task, doing self-care activities, celebrating little wins, that can make the dopamine secretion a lot higher in you. Now, for example, completing a task, of course, there are big projects to complete. There are big things that we take on in life. But you know what? Day to day, we're constantly getting an opportunity to complete a task. Simple example, maybe um, you woke up in the morning and you just got dressed and you left for work. You did not make your bed. That is not completing your task of going to bed. Somebody served you a glass of water. 
you had the water, you left the glass of water next to you on the table and you went away. You didn't take the water glass back to the kitchen and put it back. So little, little simple things like this also get the send the message to the brain, task completed, little more dopamine. So likewise, serotonin, the mood stabilizer, meditating, sun exposure, running, swimming, cycling. We know places where it's always cloudy and there's not much of a sun, people's moods are not so good, right? Oxytocin, the love hormone, comes from giving compliment to people, playing with babies, and if you're fond of dogs, holding hands, hugging. Endorphin, the pain reliever, comes from exercising, watching comedy, dark chocolate, and essential oils. So all these are little pointers towards how we can um, enhance these chemicals in our brain that are called the happy hormones. So I hope you have taken a screenshot of that. And we will move on to the next part of which Ashish already touched upon this. See, we are all made up of energy. We know that. And how does energy play a role in our lives? Let's just dig a little deeper and look at a few tips about energy. Now, we all know from our science classes, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transformed, which tells us that energy is finite, just like money. So if we are careful how we invest our money, how we save our money, how we spend our money, we need to do the same with energy. Why? Because energy is responsible for, for our stress levels. Stress is nothing but a play of energy. So many roles and responsibilities all of us have in our day-to-day -day lives. And in order to execute all those roles successfully, we need a particular dose of energy. Now, if the demand of the energy is very high and my supply of energy is low, that difference, that gap, is what is going to create the stress in me, in my body. So we've got to be very careful and energy does not get spent as we know just by doing physical activities, just by running around physically. Even if we stress ourselves, bother ourselves too much with thinking negative or thinking about the past or worrying about the future, that also drains energy out of us. The next point here is that energy creates vibration. But of course, everything that has energy, there is a corresponding vibration to it. And every vibration has a corresponding frequency. Whenever we are in a good mood, feeling happy, feeling energetic, thinking positive, the frequency is high of the vibration that we're creating. And the same way, if you're feeling low, if you're in a negative uh, mood, if you are feeling disappointed, depressed, then there is a low frequency of the vibration. And what is this vibration? This vibration is being created. It's creating an energy field around us. This is what we call aura. We say sometimes, you know, when I speak to this person, I get the good positive vibes or the other way around. When I'm around this person, I don't get a very good feeling. It's nothing but our energy field. But who is creating this energy field? We are with our thoughts, with our emotions. And if you remember, you saw the Hawking scale that Ashi shared with you. Every vibration has a corresponding frequency to it. And that frequency is deciding at what level of happiness or joy or contentment or peace we are at. And this is so important to understand because that energy field that we carry with us, every interaction, every negotiation, every relationship we have with anybody else, it's nothing but an exchange of this energy field. So we know we also see that energy can be transformed. It can't be created or destroyed, but it can be transformed, which I would think is a great news. So if I'm having little uh, you know, trouble in a relationship with somebody, perhaps by changing my thoughts about that person, I could bring about a change in the energy field around me. And as a result, I could bring about a change in the relationship with that person. I do not have much time today to share this, but I do have a personal experience on these lines. I took this up when I came across this information and knowledge as an experiment. And I tried it with a couple of colleagues whose behavior towards me was nothing short of unpleasant and uncouth. 
but it just transformed completely in very little time when I consciously started placing my attention on my thoughts. How am I thinking about them? So this is something, as I said, I'm just touching the tip of the iceberg. Do feel free to dig deeper into this. These are the things I wish we were taught when we were in science classes in school so that we would have perhaps managed our energy better. We would have managed our relationships better. And if those things are managed better, then obviously life becomes so much smoother and easier, right? But whenever I talk about all these things, a lot of people uh, ask me, but you know, it's easier said than done. You say that we need to think deliberately. You say that we need to accept. You say that we need to be grateful. You say that we need to have a leadership mindset. But how do we do it? Because things are just happening. I'm, I'm, I can't help it. Even if I understand it, I can't help it. So that brings me to the point that to develop anything, to become good at anything, we need to practice certain things that can bring us to the point where we have become a champion at it, whether it's running, whether it's losing weight, whether it's singing or dancing or whatever it is. So happiness again or well-being is exactly like that. So that brings me to sharing some just three simple yet powerful tools that can help us achieve excellence if they are practiced on a regular basis. So here is my tool number one, the morning routine, most important. I cannot emphasize enough on this because whatever you do in the morning, it sets the tone for the rest of your day. And morning routine is essentially dedicated to working on your inner world. You first need to work on your inner world, make it ready, charge it up completely before you set foot into the outer world, which is filled with all kinds of good, bad and ugly. Right. So we must never use social media first thing in the morning, which, of course, research shows that 80 percent of the people do that. Not a good idea. We cannot expose ourselves to the outer world without having worked on our inner world. How do we work on ourselves? Sweat it out in the morning. When we exercise in the morning, it releases BDNF, the brain-derived neurotropic factor. What does it do? It regenerates the stress levels in the brain cells. And I'm sure all of us uh, would have experienced that when we exercise first thing in the morning, it makes you feel fresh. It makes you feel very uplifted, right? Practicing mindfulness, meditation. I don't need to talk too much about this. I think we are all aware of this. We need to calm the chatter in the mind, make it ready, and a strategic scheduling. Whatever gets scheduled gets done. And I would say that don't just schedule all the things to do, but of course put them down. It makes you better prepared and you know how you're going to go about it. But more important than that is to schedule a list of how to be. I could make, for example, a list today and say that today, just for today, even if, say, somebody bothers me a lot, somebody's behavior irritates me at work or maybe at home, just for today, every time this person does something niggles me, I'm going to be patient. Even if I start to get irritated, I'm going to slowly breathe in, breathe out, and I'm going to bring my attention back to not feeling irritated with this person. Just an example. You could pick and choose whatever it may be. You may be wanting to overcome becoming an angry person or becoming an anxious person or whatever it may be. Put it down on your to-be list because when we put our intention on something, we're putting our attention on something, our energy flows in that direction. But it needs to be done regularly and repeatedly. And again, of course, Ashish already shared about gratitude, being grateful. Practicing gratitude first thing in the morning sets your mood right, right? Okay, now the second one that I have here is a random act of kindness. This is a beautiful saying. Unexpected kindness is the most powerful, least costly, and most underrated agent of human change. This is so true, guys. I am sure each and every one of you are kind people. You have experienced showing kindness, receiving kindness from people. But of course, but what we're talking about now is practicing it on a regular basis. What this does is, A, it helps you take the attention off from yourself because anxiety always comes from thinking about yourself. We do feel disturbed about the way everything is going on in the world, but the anxiety is always about what about me? When you start doing acts of kindness, it is always you're generating and directing your energy onto another person. So that helps you feel better and more balanced. 
And kindness, as we saw, the second thing is kindness it generates an energy that is definitely going to bring your vibration to a much higher place. So just pick anything. It does not have to be in terms of just maybe donating money and all those things are big, big acts of kindness. So what if you don't have one of those on a day to day basis? It could be like your house help comes to work and you just say, OK, today is your day off. You make that person happy or you just buy a cup of coffee for somebody, whatever it may be. But just try this and see what it does to your mood, what it does to your sense of feeling good. A random act of kindness, super powerful. And the final one is being 100%. Be present 100% in whatever you're doing. That does not mean just being present physically, as we know, putting your entire mind to something. And I'm sure all of you would have experienced this. When you're completely focused on something, you experience more clarity. There is more sharpness that gives you better productivity and a better experience. So the key word here is focus. And the reason we need to put this into our daily practice, why? because we have come to now live in a world that is designed for distraction. We are spoiled for choices. There are too many channels reporting news, social media, so many voices out there, so many news, so many opinions, so many views. There's constant distraction. In the middle of all this, if you do not practice focus, it's going to take us away from that clarity, the sharpness, the productivity, and the experience is going to be always, oh my God, what's going on? So being 100% is, uh, is something that you can put on your to-be list, right? So just to sum up what I shared with you in the tools is a morning routine, practice gratitude, be 100%, I'm sorry, random act of kindness as well. Now, as you can see through whatever Ashi shared, whatever I shared today, we can, it's safe to say that you cannot outsource happiness. It's not ready-made, it's homemade. Happiness is entirely an inside job. I just have to wake up and become powerful and take that powerful, uh, you know, whatever I have within me and become self-empowered to be happy in this life. But again, it's also true. I love the Spartan war creed that he who sweats more in training bleeds less in war. If we can put these daily tools and habits and practices in place on a regular basis, come hell or high water, I will practice these things before I set out into the outer world. Then when something hits you out of the blue, suddenly something challenging comes up, I am ready because I have worked on increasing my resilience. I have worked on upgrading my emotional intelligence. I have kind of created a security system around my emotions. So now whatever comes up, I'm in a better position to deal with it, right? So that's all I wanted to share. And now over to Ashish. You wanted to put in something at the end? Yeah, thank you so much, Amrita, for so many nuggets of wisdom. Um, you know, I'd like to share a few of my takeaways from what you shared. Uh, mm -hmm. What I liked was uh, you were talking about demand and supply of energy. That was powerful, you know. And I think if we can start managing our lives in a manner that we do everything that increases our energy, uh, then you, uh, we are in the right direction. And if we stay away from things which decrease our energy, um, you know, then, uh, uh, you know, we, we become happier and we, we achieve more and more. So that that's a very powerful paradigm I got. You know, I think the random act of kindness is another very powerful takeaway for me uh, because, uh, you know, in times like this where there are so many challenges, if you are nice to each other and especially, you know, when it is unexpected, the impact is even more. So I think that's another thing which I'll uh, try and consciously work on. And uh, the dose of uh, happiness, uh, you know, in the flow chart obviously were phenomenal. So thank, thank you so you. much, Amrita, for that. We have got some uh, interesting questions uh, coming up. Uh, so uh, just before we uh, start, open it up for question and answers. <laughs> but the last thing I would like to share with all of you, friends, is that uh, you know you have a choice at the end of this session. Uh, you have a choice to uh, continue your life the way it was earlier. Uh, before you uh, attended the session or to do things differently uh, from what Amrita and I have shared and, you know, make your life easy and smooth. And, uh, you know, when you uh, 
practice these things which I just spoke about, which Amrita shared, and gratitude, and uh, you know, manage your energy consciously, you will find that your life becomes smooth and it gathers steam and momentum uh, over a period of time. It has a snowballing effect. But the point is that initially, you know, when you start making these changes. Uh, it the, the the impact that you see is very very small you know and uh, that is where the temptation to discontinue with the practices is there uh, but i would urge you to stay uh, consistent you know even if it's small even if it's thanking one person a day or showing one random act of kindness to one person you know just stay stay on with it continue with it it is these practices are guaranteed to uh, create an impact there is no way that these will not have an impact but just stay consistent sometimes it may you may find them uh, producing results in a short period of time sometimes you may find that it takes months and years but if you stay the course you know your life will be blessed uh, and you will you know walk on the path of joy and become contribute uh, to the organizations that you're working in and to the lives you know to the people in your lives uh, so mm -hmm. that uh, pretty much brings us to the end of the, uh, I think Amrita, there are one or two more slides. Uh, uh, so the friends, in case you need to connect with me or Amrita, we shared Amrita's coordinates early on in the presentation. You can take a screenshot of this. I'm there on social media on, um, you know, so you can uh, just connect with us. Uh, Amrita's coordinates are here. Uh, so in case you would like to uh, connect with us to pursue gratitude, love, meditation, uh, or, you know, take any form uh, coaching to become happier, please feel free to do so uh, and uh, with that now we will bring the session uh, to close and open it up to question and answers <laughs> there is a very interesting question that we have got Amrita which is how positive psychology and social emotional intelligence uh, impacts your performance and health could you repeat that again Ashish I lost your voice in between yeah yeah sure Amrita the question is how positive psychology and social emotional intelligence impacts mm -hmm. performance and health. Performance and health. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh yes. That that that's a so, wonderful so question. Just, everything. Yeah, yeah. I think positive everything listed out. Yeah, positive psychology. And the emotional intelligence. How does it impact uh, performance and health? I would say it impacts every single aspect of your life. Your life is not just a four letter word life, right? There is your relationships, there is your work, there is money, there is your health and fitness, there is a family life, there are relationships and so on and so forth. So many different uh, uh, pieces come together to create the entire experience of life. And all these things that you listed out, for sure, because it sharpens your intellect. And it's your intellect which does the job of deciding yes from no, good from bad, right from wrong. So if you become empowered to take decisions that are more favorable for you and your family or for your community or whatever, definitely uh, the output of the result of whatever you put in is going to be uh, of better quality so each of these and yeah the, these are very meaty topics right ashish we could take each one of them and do an entire session on them but very good question yes these are all uh, they will help you take better decisions in life and they would also help you help others which is so important today not just to help our own selves but to be able to even help be there for others in a positive way not just to join in with others and say yeah but of course you'll feel bad yes i'm there for you yes you're there for them but how can we uh, you know the idea should be whoever i meet whichever state of mind i meet them in when i leave i should leave them in a better state of mind i should leave them feeling more positive so all these qualities that you listed out enables us to do that as well. Thank, thank you, Amrita. There's another very interesting question, uh, which is how can I uh, improve my working relationships? I think I gave that answer when I was talking about the exchange of energy uh, between yeah. people. And I gave the example of my working relationship with my colleagues, because see, whatever it is, somebody may be behaving wrong or unfair or in an unwanted manner with me. 
I may be a very dignified person and decent person, I continue to still be respectful and nice with them. But what are the thoughts I'm creating in my mind? This is what I was doing. I was not openly showing them that, you know, I find them very unpleasant or anything. I would continue to be respectful because that's my nature. But in my mind, I was creating thoughts and also talking to other people. Can you believe it? What's wrong with these people? They behave like this. They're so uncouth. I'm being so nice to them. What is wrong with them? Now, these thoughts are coming up in my mind. And when I'm thinking like that, remember the, the, the energy field, always be aware of that, that I'm thinking like that. I'm creating that energy field and that energy field is also in their energy field. Once I stopped thinking like that and started consciously, Every day, if you are coming across somebody and the working relationship is coming in the way of something or the other, is it easy? No, because it's coming up again and again. It's niggling you. It's troubling you again and again. But here is the challenge. Every time it comes up, because I have put it in my to-be list, that today, when these thoughts come up, I'm going to change my thought or transform my thought deliberately, intentionally, purposely into positive thoughts towards them. So I'm going to create thoughts about lovingly blessing them or saying, let them be happy. I would love to see them successful. It's not easy. At the beginning, it's very difficult because you're experiencing something and you're saying something else. But stick with it. Be regular with it. Do it as an experiment. That's what I did. I did it as an experiment. After 10 days or so, the people who would not even say a good morning back to me. I mean, I would say good morning just to turn their heads away. From there, from a distance, they would call out my name and started greeting me good morning. So that was an evidence, a little ray of hope that, oh, this is working. So let me just continue with that. And long story short, over a period of time, the relationship changed to the extent that they started favoring me. They started pushing me for everything. They started, you know, praising me. And the relationship completely went to, I cannot tell you, it just felt magical. So that's why I said that dig deeper into this whole concept of creating the energy field. And with that, you can go out there and you can transform your relationship because energy can be transformed. So just keep that in yes. mind. Work as an experiment. That's very, yeah, uh, uh, that's a very powerful point and very interesting point you've made, Amrita. We tend to think of ourselves as an isolated person and uh, as an isolated uh, uh, energy field but uh, when we uh, but we are not uh, isolated we are all connected and when i change my thoughts i change my energy and that reflects you know that connects with the people around us we don't realize it because we can't see it uh, and sometimes you know we uh, what we can't see we don't believe uh, but there is uh, great power you know in changing our thoughts towards others thanking them wishing them well as you said it might be challenging but it works uh, initially it might be yes. challenging initially as you practice you start seeing i think that's very very powerful and i'm glad time and hangout has taken this initiative to organize this session on this very important topic you know which is very relevant to everybody you know whether it's relationships at workplace or at home you know we're all having these challenges uh, there's another very interesting question how to prioritize and balance the various roles throughout our lives uh, Amrita, were you able to hear this question? Uh, so I, I think there is, uh, Amrita, were you able to hear the question? Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, now okay. I can so hear. The, yes, I'd lost okay. you for a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, no problem. So the question is uh, how to prioritize and balance the various roles throughout our lives. You want to answer that? You want me to answer that? Please, please. Okay. Uh, this is something I deal with a lot in my life coaching sessions with my clients, how to prioritize. This requires us to take those exact little, little pieces that we want to figure out which one comes first, which comes next, and answer a few questions about those things. How important is this particular area of whatever you're trying to prioritize for all the other aspects of my life? How badly do I need it? How many people or how much does that influence my life and other people's life? What would happen if I do this? And what would happen if I don't do this? Trust me, when you start asking these questions to yourself, you will be able to start figuring out what is more important than the other. And you would also find that sometimes in our to-do list, we have put certain things which are kind of not even in our control. 
And we are thinking that we can control it, we can influence it. When you do the sifting and sorting, it makes it very clear that, okay, where my energy should go? Because wherever your, uh, your attention goes, energy flows. So you will become very clear. So you need to break it down, break down each part of each of those tasks that you want to put on your list that what happens when I do this? What happens when I don't do this? What are the areas of my life that gets impacted by this? Because everything we do is impacting. There's a collateral impact that is happening. It's not just if I'm, I'm working, then I'm just working. When I'm working, so many other people are getting influenced and impacted by it. So many other areas of my life are getting impacted by it. So just weigh them out in a very broad perspective. It's about you know spending little time and establishing a close relationship with everything you do. When you establish that close relationship, you will start to understand and unravel also very easily, like what is more important than what. That's just my personal experience, and this is something that works very, very well with my uh, clients as well. But I know I can't, cannot take you through your personal list of priorities that you're talking about, but I hope you got some some guideline on how to go about it. Yeah. Uh, that, 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 thanks for sharing that, Amrita. And uh, you know, I would like to just recommend that you Google on the Big Rocks, Big B I G, Big Rocks video by Dr. Stephen Covey, and that's a brilliant perspective on how to manage your priorities and how to manage your time i'm sure you will find that interesting uh, there are many questions friends but uh, you know there is a paucity of time so we'll not be able to address all of them uh, i'll request time session hangout team to share these questions with us and we'll be happy to respond to the people who have asked the questions but there's one last one which i would like to take before we close and that that's uh, you know how to change our environment uh, especially when there are too many people with negative mindset around me. Too many people with, I keep going back to the same topic of understand the science of energy because everybody is made up of energy. The whole environment is made up of vibration. We are all connected with each other through the vibration of the matters and we are all made up of the same matter. So if I want to, if we somehow feel that, or we have been taught that way since we were little, that if I want to bring about a change, maybe in a spouse or my child or my neighbor or anybody, I will have to talk to them, I'll have to speak with them, I have to sit them down, I have to make them understand, or I have to pull them up. We tried all these tricks and how often have you all found that very often they don't work. You can go on saying the same things to, you know, people right next to you, but they will not, uh, you know, follow through up until they themselves feel like doing it. So I have come to understand that words, yes, they are important to communicate using words, but the best communication of bringing about change anywhere around us is only through the vibrations, only through the energy. So that's why I said that once we raise our energy, again and again, I'm bringing you back, your attention back to Ashish, sharing the Hawkins scale. The more we bring our positivity, and if you noticed in that particular diagram that he shared, the more positive you're feeling, the more expanse there is in your frequency and the vibration around you. So imagine if you're expanding that feeling, it is going to impact people that are around you. You want to bring about a change around you, it has to be done with the positive feeling inside of me. Many people, when you go around, they say that, oh, the world has become like this and the world has become like that. I, I wish the world would be a better place. Guess what? We are all contributing to it. If I say I want peace in life and then I go open social media, and I engage myself in all the battles and fights and people uh, left wing and right wing and everything and politics and all that, then you see what I want and what I'm engaging in. There's a conflict between the two. So right there is my participation. I want people to be peaceful around. I have to now become careful how I'm investing my time, my attention, my energy, how much I'm investing it into something which is all about restlessness or am I investing it into peace? So these are little ways of becoming aware that my energy, my vibration is extending out to other people. So that's why I said, please dig deeper into the science of happiness. Study a little more about the quantum physics and how it 
impacts our lives. And this is, according to me, that's the only way of doing it because we are repeatedly going on cribbing and complaining and saying the world has become such a horrible place. And that's what we have radiated out there. And it's just becoming more and more and more and more. We need to make a U-turn and come back and start speaking a language of what we really want the world to be, not what it has already become. And that's how we can start bringing about a change in the way we are vibrating. And that's how we can start impacting in a more positive manner. That's what I personally believe in. Thank you for sharing that, Amrita. That's so powerful. I'd just like to add one uh, another perspective, which is, uh, you know, um, uh, accepting things and people as they are. You know, they, they might appear to be negative, but, you know, the minute we are judging them to be negative, uh, you know, we are in a stance where our energy reduces. And who am I to judge they are negative? You know, because they might be judging me to be negative. You know, so who is negative? Me judging them to be negative or they judging me to be negative? And what is negative? Day is negative or night is negative? You know, so th these are all judgments, you know, or perceptions. So uh, I would request you not to get uh, too judgmental. Be open. Uh, as Amrita was sharing, life is the best teacher. There is a reason why these people are there in your life. Uh, if you can take the learning, if you can be loving with them, I think you will, uh, you know, really uh, thrive and be very happy. I'm so grateful to each one of you for taking up time and joining us today yes. and asking such enlightening questions. You know, we wish we could have continued talking about it because yes. this is where it really gets exciting, you know, when there are questions and answers and we can engage with you. But uh, for paucity of time, we will bring the session to a close. And I once again would like to uh, thank the Times Ascent team for taking this Times Ascent Hangout team, for taking this initiative, for organizing this uh, discussion on such a important topic which impacts all of us you know we are all uh, in leadership positions you know whether we are an individual or you know in our family or in workplace we are all impacting people around us and if we are happy and joyful you know then it's not only us but everybody around us who gets impacted uh, so uh, i uh, uh, pray all of you to be happy i hope you have got some value in the session today and you will practice uh, you know what we have some of the thoughts that we have shared and uh, become happier and more joyful thank you everyone thank you amrita for thank joining you this session. thank you thank you so much thank you everybody